there is an indefinable, mysterious power that pervades everything. That power that can make a way out of nowhere. Today, the world, in the world, is so much suffering because of that one of prayer. Welcome, everybody, to the Prayer Revolution. I am so glad that you are here. This is your daily prayer podcast. My name is Goyal, and I'm here with my good friend, Vera. And we say a morning prayer every day. We've been doing it for a while now. <laughs> we say a morning prayer to reconnect ourselves, to pause, um, to reflect, to invite our higher power into our lives. And we discuss that mood of prayer in our everyday life. And uh, we're, we're, we're chugging along, trying to get to episode 100. This is episode 92, although it's more than that, because... We've missed a few recordings. Like yesterday's recording, I was in a car on the road. We did the podcast, but it wouldn't record for some reason on my phone, so we missed it. So there's a few missed recordings. So this is actually probably like episode 95, 96 or something, but officially on the record, it's episode 92. So we're getting there. Um, and you have all been a part of it. Thank you so much every step of the way. Thank you all so much. We love you. And I love you. How are you doing this morning? doing good yeah I'm, I'm walking down i you know what it's it's interesting like anytime something with electronics doesn't work i sort of like have like like my electronics stop working in my own brain I'm like wait a minute like this thing is supposed to be my friend and supposed to be reliable <laughs> um i just have noticed that throughout my life that and, and I've, I've been better about it like i used to be I used to be the guy that, you know, when the thing wasn't working, you know, it was either getting smashed or close to it, you know? Um, and, and so, you know, now, now I'm like, I'm like, okay, interesting, a little bit frustrating. And also it is what it is. And so, um, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm on my phone right now. My computer, I think it, it may be on its last leg. Oh no. I remember when you got that computer. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's been a workhorse, man. That thing has, uh, it's, it's worked hard. It's served. It's given its life. It's in selfless service and sacrifice to my fingers. And uh, wow. very, very grateful for it. But otherwise, yeah, you know what? Um, let's see. Today, okay, well, this is what I was thinking about today. And I was, and I was thinking that we could, we could um, pray on this as well, is you know, uh, it won't be a surprise to you that, um, you know, this is the realization I'm having is that our focus is internal. And, you know, that's what I've been really thinking about the last, um, really since I've been down in Florida, but just kind of really like honing in on it, that, you know, the, the quality of my, my Japa meditation, meditating on God's names each day and, and connection with God, the quality of that hour, two hours that, that I do that each day really is the quality of my life. Really like that. That's, that's a little microcosm of it right there. It's a perfect assessment. It's a perfect opportunity to recalibrate. And to the degree that I'm really, you know, in a process of surrendering to just hearing the mantra while I'm meditating, then I notice that I surrender to the experience of life with that same quality of grace. I surrender to what's happening outside of me, like my computer, you know, not working. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't irritate me or, or throw me out of my center um, so easily. There's a mu much more strength and, and being able to surrender to the moment, trusting that it's God's will unfolding. And so that's just been my, my meditation recently. You know, I've, I've been an externally focused person for most of my life. And I've, I've always had an internal life, but primarily externally focused in regards to how I experience success and, and how I experience myself as reaching my potential. And um, I'm, yeah, like really just actively working to change that narrative and, and to, you know, to, to put into action what I believe, which is that my internal state of being is what I bring into everything that I will do in my life, whether that's running the Bhakti Center or, you know, another project or, my relationship with my son, whatever it may be. So that most basic premise that our consciousness, we're bringing it into everything we do. I really wanted to just, uh, you know, just yeah, rest my laurel on it, you know, just 
to not trick myself into thinking that, you know, fulfillment and happiness and, and what I'm seeking is somehow or other outside of myself, outside of, you know, it is dependent upon life, you know, working out the way that I want it to. So that is, that's my little reflection right now. And, uh, and, and I want to pray on that. You guys up for that? Yes. Okay. It's, it's pretty much, um, it's pretty much the same thing we, we talk about every day and, uh, and never gets old for me. So I hope it's staying fresh for you guys too. Let's take a moment to pause and whatever it is that we're doing to pause that and to close our eyes and to be comfortable in our seat, to be comfortable, whatever it is that we're doing right now to, to pause that and, and to just let ourself rest in, in a, a state of comfort and a state of ease. There's nothing that you have to do right now. Just, just to receive, just to be is, is what we're asking for these next few moments. My dear Lord, my attention is drawn to so many things in my life that I think will bring me fulfillment and happiness. Um, but actually are just a distraction, you know, just an activity in itself, not connected to you really is a, a distraction from what it is I'm truly seeking and reconnecting to myself spiritually and reconnecting to you moment to moment throughout my days, throughout my life. We're praying today that for all of us that are tuning in right now, that are entering into this prayer, entering into this mood, this collective uh, offering that we're creating right now, that our minds, like a river to the sea, our minds may be drawn to you. And everything that we do in our life, that first our minds may be drawn to you. That whenever we have free time and we're considering, what should I do now? What should I do now with my time? That we put you first, even if it's for a few moments, even if it's just a brief check-in. But when we ask ourselves that question, if we're in the busyness of life, we find those pauses to put you first, to invite you into our life. And then when we notice the, the time and the space that life is giving us, the end of our day, the beginnings of our days, you know, and, and, and how we schedule our time, that we schedule that space, we schedule in that time with those activities that we know bring us closer to you. We know that they are an investment in a quality relationship with you just like with our marriages and with our children and family and friends that we, if we want those relationships to grow, we invest quality time with thoughtfulness, with intention. Clearly, what is it that we're going into this relationship to offer, to give our presence, thoughtfulness, care, kindness, compassion, and the same way in our relationship with you, let us dig deeper to have a more profound level of thoughtfulness that you're not just a commodity in our life. You're not just something that we connect to, someone that we check in with here and there and, and forget about for the majority of the time. But, but really, you're walking with us. You're on this journey with us. And you're just waiting. You're there with a smile on your face, patiently waiting for us to invite you into our lives. You don't judge us. You don't have any critical mind frame toward us just smiling, just, just waiting patiently as a dear most friend, watching us as we move through the ups and downs of life and beckoning us with that smile, with that gentleness. Please let me come into your life. You ask us that. You want to come into our life. And let us open up, open up our hearts to you, open up our lives to you. The fulfillment that we're seeking in life is not in things. It's not in the accomplishments. It's not in doing and perfecting our external life. All of those things are beautiful and glorious as long as they're connected to you. But when they're disconnected from you, then they become shallow and they become hollow and they lose the meaning. And so we end up chasing and chasing and chasing and never finding that fulfillment, which is had only when we reconnect spiritually, only when we invite you into our life. So let that be moment to moment for us in our lives. 
let us see the great opportunity that we have beginning to awaken spiritually and seeing how much can I insert you into my life, keeping a lecture playing while I'm at work, or keeping sacred sound going while I'm doing the chores around the house, or I'm in the car now, what do I, what do I listen to? You know, or now I have some free time, what do I go to? Please give us the courage, please give us the strength, please give us the conviction that as we insert you, bring you more and more and more into the center of our life, that we will truly experience that fulfillment that we're seeking. And that all the things that we do in our life, they will contain you. We'll be able to bring that essence and that quality of our soul and your presence into every relationship, into every activity that we perform in our life. And so we chant your names in that same mood, for that same purpose. We call out your holy names, putting you in the center of our life knowing that as we do so, that we move toward that beautiful eternal relationship with you. We move toward that awakening of all the beauty of our own soul. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So much here. Appreciate it deeply. So beautiful from the heart. Thank you, Baba. Yeah. I'm grateful. I think about that so much. Actually, I just recently um, I got a new phone not too long ago, and uh, I didn't have a case for it for a little while. But I was I wanted to get a I wanted to get a, a wooden case with an engraving on it because because the phone is just like. It's so, like you were saying, like, I'm driving in the car, or I'm listening to this, or what am I spending my time going into? And it's so easy just to get, like the way technology is designed today, it's, it's meant to steal our attention. And mm. our, attention is, it, our attention is the most valuable, com our attention is the most valuable commodity in the global economy today. Um, and it's constantly being taken away from us. And I think, and spiritual life is that journey of, of reclaiming our attention and placing it in places that we know will lift us and bring us closer to source and spiritual truth. And so, so I, 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 I had my friend, uh, my friend Bidya, uh, write in calligraphy this verse from the Bhagavad Gita, and then I, I engraved it on the back of my phone. Amazing. Then, Krishna says, engage your mind always in thinking of me, become my devotee, offer obeisances unto me, and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. This engraving mm. on the back of my phone. So every time I go on my phone, I'm like, okay, is this bringing me closer to Krishna or not? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like this device is meant to bring me closer to Krishna. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, I'm not, I mean, I'm not good at that. I oftentimes just like, okay, let me take this case off for a minute. Um, mm. But those little reminders for ourselves um are powerful you know what i mean like we have so many we have a tv we have a phone we have uh you know whatever it might be and mm. the beauty is that all of it i think that 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 turning of the ship to spiritual life is starting to just sprinkle in a little bit more of christian reminders in our life you know and so i appreciated that and that was my my that's my attempt to to try and try and do that. Oh, you're muted. Unmute. Okay. Yeah. To it's it's beautiful, Doyle. I love that example. You know, um, you know, in Srila Prabhupada, I remember Radha Swami when he first, you know, one of the first few encounters with Srila Prabhupada. One of them was in Vrindavan, and Srila Prabhupada was giving a lecture in, in Vrindavan, India, and he was speaking about the microphone and he was speaking about the energy of God and that everything is the energy of God. And based on how we use it, it either brings us closer to God or it, it separates us and moves us further away from God. And he was using the example of a microphone and that the microphone could be used for all different types of propaganda and singing all different types of songs that have nothing to do with, with, uh, 
reconnecting spiritually, reawakening to have nothing to do with truth. And sometimes really could be the antithesis of that and could be used to broadcast that. And that same microphone could also be used to broadcast the message of God, you know, the message of compassion, the message of um, awakening our souls. And so in the same way, our phones can be used for that. Our Zoom can be used for that. The internet can be used for that. Computers, cars, you know, what are we, you know, when our life is becoming more and more God-centric than everything in our life, the pen that we use, our work, the money that we earn, the friendships and relationships we have, every single part of our life, every area can become also either a supportive or a direct way that we're connecting with our higher power and we're connecting and reawakening spiritually. And so that's, I feel like, you know, Vaisheshika Maharaj, a great teacher and friend of ours and, and in the New York community and really all around the world. He's such an amazing teacher that, you know, in our, our conversations and he shares it in his lectures is that to fill the gaps, you know, like Doyle, you're, you're sharing that, to fill the spaces in our life, to fill the gaps in our life with remembrance of God, you know, and that the, mo the more that we recognize the gaps, we become aware of them. And the more that it's just, we're just inserting remembrance. We're inserting a prayer. We're inserting truth we're, we open up the gita and read a verse we open up the bible and read a verse we open up you know um our phone and and uh it's so powerful right you got the whole bhagavad gita right there you can, you can have all the scripture right on your phone you got youtube and lectures and kirtans and there's constant there's a constant ability to to be absorbed and be connected and really it's just okay like that that's what's most important in my life and i'm going to I'm going, to keep, I'm going to keep weaving it in. I'm going to weave it in to every, becomes the before and after. And then it becomes the, you know, as, as it becomes the before and after of all of our activities, more and more and more and more and more and more and more, it becomes the before and after of every moment. It becomes every moment of our life. We're able to fully be absorbed in that God consciousness. And it's very practical. You know, it's, it's with that sincerity of really wanting God to be in the center of our life, really believing that, through putting spiritual life first, through putting God first, that we will experience the greatest fulfillment that we're seeking in everything that we do in our life. And we have that sincerely in the core of our heart, then all right, then it's just like, a, it's like an experiment. We're like, we're doing this, uh, this spiritual experiment to see how much can I weave God into my consciousness. And we try it out for a day, we try it out for a week, it's, it's a guaranteed result that's going to come from it. It's a guaranteed result of deeper fulfillment, of deeper, clarity, of deeper connection, more clarity of that happiness and everything that we're seeking in our life, actually experiencing it in the, in the present moment. And so it becomes this fun, fun experiment that we're all on. I was thinking of it as I was coming out of the prayer. You know, it's like, all right, like what? And, I, and then, you know, coming out of the prayer, I went right into another prayer before opening my eyes, which is, this, this whole prayer, this whole podcast is an offering to you, my Lord. You know, let this, let this be something which is pleasing to you. Let this be something which genuinely helps us to connect to you, connect to ourselves spiritually. Let this be an, an offering and gratitude to the teachers who somehow or other helped me to make this the center of my life through their example, through their inspiring example, my friends that have helped to do that. You know, and, and, uh, and then right now, it's like even, it's like in this moment, it's like, all right, like, you know, Yes, my Lord, this is your will, right? It's like any space in the kind, yes, my Lord, this is your will. We're connecting to your will right now. You're with us right now. Like that's the reality. And so that, that's the little, you know, that's kind of been my fun little homework, little, I would, you know, create little goals and little, you know, regiment sheets. And, and oftentimes it's, it's externally focused and um, for good causes and whatnot. But right now I'm really just saying like, okay, how can, in every moment of my life and how can I like just really focus on every moment of my life just remembering you know and like create like a create like a spread whatever you know like create all the fun stuff that like helps us remember you know like use the gadgets use the phone use the reminders use the friends use the you know whatever it is to start to trigger that that response of that beautiful tree blowing in the wind outside of my window right now let that trigger a response of 
recognizing God in nature. And so nothing, nothing new that I'm, I'm sharing right now. <laughs> you, know, you know what the really, what, that, that I, that I, um, something that I do that I like, and I, I, I haven't done this in a little while, but I just started getting in the other day is, uh, um, finding verses, remembering verses from sacred mm. scriptures. It's so powerful. Mm-hmm. We all remember, remember principles, remember teachings, remember quotes and this and that, but like actually going through sacred literature, you know, whatever it might be, whatever sacred literature you read, I mean, for myself, I read the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam. Many of our listeners tune into Wisdom of the Sages with Raghunath and, and Kastuba. You know, finding, finding verses that really, sp- and even if you don't, um, you know, have trouble pronouncing Sanskrit. I don't want to remember the Sanskrit, even just the English, you know what I mean? Like uh-huh. remembering like this English verse and like, like putting it to memory, like just the, just the activity of putting something to memory is engaging my mental faculties. It's engaging my intellect. It's like, it's, it's like, it's, it's creating a sum scar. It's like, it's like burning that, that specific phrase and structure into my consciousness in a specific way. And then, and then what happens is like they become, they become like, um, they become posts that you hold on to during mm. difficult periods of life. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, you know, like it's, like, it's like, it's like, you know, whenever like you stumble or you fall and it's like you look to grab onto something to catch your balance, you know? Mm-hmm. Verses that you remember in your consciousness, they become like the, the, the handrails or the, the, the thing, the branches that you hold on to that keep mm. you stable. And they just become like a source, like Christian. Like Krishna said, like there are many, there are different ways of performing devotional service. Krishna says, um, Shravanam Kirtam Vishnu Smaram. Smaram means remembering. Mm-hmm. So, just remembering. so, you know, how often is, how, just how often everybody, you don't have to raise your hand, but often just on a random, on any random moment in your life, you're just remembering some TV show that you saw, some conversation that you had, and you start thinking about it. You start thinking about this conversation, you start thinking about this TV show plot, you start thinking about this movie, you start thinking about this vacation, you, like all these things just come up and your mind is just remembering. You're just remembering mm-hmm. all these different things that just happen, just random material things that happen just because it happens to pop up in your memory. Mm-hmm. What if you start remembering these specific verses that are mm-hmm. speaking spiritual truth to us? And it's like, it becomes like, oh, okay, it's a challenge for the mind. Some of us mm-hmm. remember things very easily. Some of us may take like some just, it's just like repetition. It's just repetition to remember mm-hmm. these verses. And then it, it, you'll see amazingly, it'll pop up in conversation. Because somebody will come to you and like be talking, well, I'm going through this in life. Or you'll be thinking, you know, before you, before you have to reach out to somebody else for advice or share what's going on in your life, Krishna himself from within in the form of these verses will appear to you in your consciousness. Mm-hmm. And you will feel direction. You'll feel comfort. And it's like, you will, you will slowly become, you know, they're like, they're like friends that you associate with mm-hmm. these beautiful verses, you know, and you mm-hmm. feel like it's not just some vague spiritual, you know, upliftment of, you know, spiritual life is, 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 is love and acceptance and service, but it's like there are specific verses that you like can ground yourself in spiritual truth and sacred literature. So that's a powerful, powerful way. If people are looking for just like practical tips mm-hmm. is um, engage your mind and your memory and learning verses from sacred literature. Mm-hmm. Um, I find it is like a powerful way to engage the intellect and to, um, yeah, to remember. Totally. Yeah. And it's something that I've been thinking about with those things is, is to create habits out of them, you know, like whatever those good things are, like whatever those things are that are like, wow, I feel a lot better when I do that. You know, it's like, why do we stop doing those things? Of course, there's a, there's a whole, you know, psych, there's a whole science behind that, you know, and, you know, right now, and we're like, wow, we're, we're, we're really looking to create these new, these new etch in these new some scars, etch in these, these new patterns into our psychology. You know, when I get home, I sit on the couch and turn on the TV. It's like, no, no, no. When I get home, you know, like, that trigger to sit down and watch TV now triggers me to sit down and, you know, chant God's names for five minutes, you know, and then I may go watch TV after that. That's, that's, that's okay. You know, but it's like that I start to just fill those spaces and those guys start to, or I open the Bhagavad Gita and, you know, there's that beautiful verse that Doyle just recited today, you know, that, you know, let us, you know, let us go deeper into etching those new memories in and creating, making them habits. 
totally. I mean, it's like how many times do I just go? It's like okay, I've got I got five minutes while I'm waiting for the subway, or I've got you know I'm waiting in line for ten minutes, or you know uh, the person that I'm meeting is late, so I'm just hanging out waiting. It's like what do we do? We go on our phone, we scroll through something, we look at the news, we scroll through Instagram. We, we check whatever, we look up pictures of, of beaches that we hope to visit someday. Like we just go through stuff, you know? And it's like, imagine if it's like, oh, I got five minutes. Let me go and let me go try to remember that verse that I was, th- there's this verse I'm trying to remember. Let me pull mm-hmm. up for five minutes and just recite this verse and put it to my memory and see what, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Let me, okay, mm-hmm. no, I've got 10 minutes. I'm just waiting for a friend. They're a little late. Let me pull up this verse and just remember it. And it's just like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, powerful. And our phones, is so it's such a beautiful it's such a beautiful you can you can you can use it for that there's resources mm-hmm. aditi's asking please recommend a book if there is one that contains memorizable memorizable verses from Shri Bhagavad and Bhagavad Gita there is there are a lot of resources out there that have done this there's also i mean there's there they're categorized in ways there there are verses that are just they're very popular verses that are quoted very often that are good to know and then there are also just like when amongst reading there are verses that i found like like one of my favorite verses from Shema Bhagavatam, I've been putting it back to memory. Because sometimes I'll remember verses and then I'll forget them and have to put them back to memory again. Is a verse that not many people have heard. It's just a verse that I've read. It's actually coming up. And if you listen to Wisdom of the Sages, it's Canto 1, chapter 15, verse 21. We should be getting up on that verse pretty soon. But, um, and, uh, and, um, but you know, sometimes verses. So what I was actually thinking is it would be really great if people wanted to get together and have a little like... Um, a verse remembering group, you know what I mean? Like a group of people that wanted to meet once a week or something like that, or however often, and just meet for 15 minutes or whatever, like on a Zoom group or have a WhatsApp group. And we're just remembering verses together. Like, hey, this week we're gonna put this verse to memory and we're gonna, we're gonna come together. And so um, um, VedaBase online, VedaBase.io is a great resource. Someone wants to put that in the chat board. It's just, it's just all kinds of scripture that's free online. Um, um, but maybe we'll this week, we'll keep mentioning it out there. If you would like to be in a, a weekly or something, um, my memory needs massaging, a verse remembering group, we can put, I could put, recommend verses to learn and we can get a WhatsApp group going if you want, or, uh, we can have a weekly call group or however often. Um, I would love that because it'd be good for me and create some accountability. People, we can remember verses, we can recite them together. We could even have a short little discussion on how to remember them and what they mean for us, just brief. And um, so um, if anyone would like that, please write to us at Aditi G. Our scribe, Bryn, is not here. Um, you can help me organize it, Aditi G. We need just write to me at prayerrevolution at bhaktisenter.org or write to me at doyal at bhaktisenter.org. And um, let's do it. Link above, I'm in. What's the link that you posted? Sounds like you've got a uh, sounds like you you got a excited and enthused crew. Yes, trying. Awesome. Actually, to be honest with you, Aditi G, I'm going to put you on the spot. Aditi G, you want to come off of I want to come off a of mute real quick, Aditi. I can chat with you just for a second. We'll end here. I am on mute. Aditi, yes, Prabhu. How can I help? You want to help me organize this group? I would love that. If people write to you, can you put it all together and create like a group or something? Yes, absolutely. I'd love that. I, I, yeah, I've been doing it in my own ways, but not, not something for Bhakti Center and it will be my pleasure. So do you want to put some contact information for you in the chat board and people can write to you? Yeah, for and sure. And you organize all the names and people and then bring it to me and we'll get something going? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'm going to send my email right now. Everybody write to Aditi. She's putting her email there. I'm not sure if she's, I, 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 I'm pretty sure knowing Aditi, she's a pure soul. She's saying yes because she wants to and not just because she's on the spot. And if she says no, she'll look bad in front of everybody. So I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm coercing you in public to do this. But I just know no. you and your, and your enthusiasm and your organization, I'm sure. The, the only verse I remember, and this is something... Um, Raghu Prabhuji recommended to remember is Advaitam Achutam Anadri Manantam Rupam. That's the one I remember, and I, I recite that all the time. Aw, oh, sweet. That's a song he sings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
but okay. yeah, I, I'd love that. We'll, we'll get, well, there's all kinds of beautiful ones, and we'll, it'll be a, it'll be a fun little group. Okay, guys, write to Ditti to tell her if you're in. She'll coordinate all the names. Check it out on the chat board. This is exciting. Thanks for for inspiring it. You're muted again, Vera. Inspiring me every single day, guys. Thank you so much, and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you, Doyle. Thank you. Everybody. All right, love you guys so much. This we're gonna. I'm gonna leave the the meeting on for just a second if people want to catch Aditi's. Oh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, if you want to catch Aditi's name or email. Anyways, love you guys so much. Please be well. Take care. We love you guys, and we'll see you all again tomorrow. Adiós. Okay. Bye bye, crew.